Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon. Um, if you have been here before, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Of course, if you like any of my videos, make sure you give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And you can also hit that bell to get notifications when I do upload a video again so you won't miss out. All right, so this video is gonna be so fun today. We are actually gonna be talking about makeup products that I have an unkind of popular opinion about. I'm not sure what I'm gonna name this video, but something along those lines. So these are products that here on YouTube, people just really generally love. And for whatever reason, they didn't work for me. So I have, like I said, an unpopular opinion about them. But these aren't necessarily bad products, and some of them I actually use. It's just that there's something about them maybe that didn't work, or something about them that actually worked for me that didn't work for others. And that happens a lot with makeup, and you should always watch various videos, of course, before you actually make a decision on makeup, because it really does depend on your skin type if that is going to work for you. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and without talking anymore, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start from like the ones that I probably hear about the, they're kind of like, there is opinions about them on YouTube, but not as many, to like ones that are really controversial. So this one I'm gonna start out with is actually from Physicians Formula, and this is the Butter Bronzer, or sorry, not Butter Bronzer. <laughs> this is the Butter Blush. So they came out with these a little while back, and the first one that I got, I got, um, I think it was Natural Glow and Plum Rose were the two initial colors that came out to begin with. So most people that tried them did not love them and they were really surprised because so many people love the Butter Bronzer, which I actually love as well. But the first two colors I will say that came out in this were really light. Like they were, I am a pale person generally, and they were pretty light on my skin. I was able to use Plum Rose and I thought the formula was good, but the colors were just too light. And I think that was the initial problem and why everyone was, re was reviewing it so poorly. And a lot of people were saying it just didn't show up, it didn't look good, it didn't blend out. But the initial problem I think was just that it wasn't showing up. So people were reviewing it poorly. But a little while after, they came out with two new colors. They came out with this one, which is Vintage Rouge. So it kind of looks like that. And it has the same kind of physician's formula, that kind of like tropical coconutty scent that I really love. And this color is a deeper kind of, I would say light to medium skin tone. It's still probably not the best for deeper, deeper skin tones, but you could get away with this one. And there is a rosy pink one as well that came out that was a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, I love these. And I know so many people don't, but like I said, I think the initial problem was the color selection. And I do think Physicians Formula really does need to better their range on all of their products. Everything that they put out is geared towards really light skinned people or kind of in the medium range, but mostly like fair light, which is nice, but you need some other stuff as well. Come out with more shades in this because it is a good formula, I think, and I think it blends out well. I've worn this a lot. I've shared it in one of my favorites videos. I know a lot of people don't like this, but I think if you give it a shot, the new like shades a shot, the two new ones, you will like this. So I, I personally like this, and I know a lot of people didn't, but like I said, give the two new shades that they came out with a shot because I think it might change your mind. All right, guys, so... <laughs> The next one, I feel like I'm gonna get so much flack on this and I might get some comments on it. Um, I'm gonna start by saying I really love Jeffree Star Cosmetics. I like the brand, I like his liquid lipstick formula, I like his lip ammos. They work well for me. Um, I wanted to try one of his skin frosts, so I purchased, because I am a lighter skin tone, I purchased Princess Cut. So here's what it looks like. I love the packaging, we're gonna start out with that. It's huge, you get a lot of product, and it has a big old nice mirror on it, and this is what the color looks like. So I'll kind of put it right in front of the camera so you can see it, really reflective and pretty. My big, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this, and I, I don't know if I'm applying it incorrectly, or if I just, I don't know, and maybe just the color, like I have said in a previous video that I'd like to try different colors and maybe that would change my mind about this product. 
But I find, like, if you can, like, look up close in this, you can see where I used it just a little bit over on that corner. But I just find, I don't know, like, when you swatch this, and, like, I am really swatching that, like, I don't know. It's not super... And then I swatch it on my hand, and, like, you don't even see it. Like, I don't even see this. And I don't know. I've tried other brushes with this. Like, I've tried a few different highlighting brushes. And I just find it, like, gets really chunky and sticks to one area on my skin. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't work with my skin. I'm just not a huge fan. I can wear it, and I do on occasion. But I find I have to build it up. And that's not what I was expecting from a Jeffree Star highlighter. Because these are very, you know popular and they've pretty much been marketed as super super um blinding which a lot of people here on youtube put them on and they are so i don't know maybe it's just mine or if i need to get a new color but i do want to try another one of these because they are pretty hyped up and a lot of people do love them so i'm thinking maybe it's just the color but for me this is just a bit chunky it's really firmly pressed it's almost kind of dry and it doesn't really show up well on my skin so yeah, I just, unfortunately, this just did not work for me. Um, like I said, if these work for you, that's awesome. This one just wasn't my favorite, but maybe I need to try a different one. What I'm going to talk about is an older foundation. Um, there's actually another foundation that's very similar to this one that I'm going to talk about, but I don't have it because I actually decluttered it. Um, but this one is an oldie, but one that was really talked about a lot here on YouTube. And this is from Tarte. It's the Amazonian Clay 12-Hour Foundation. I barely use any of this, and honestly, I should probably get rid of it. I think the shade I have is fairly light beige. It's supposed to be 12-hour and oil-free. Um, I got this on Tarte's website. I have never been so disappointed with the foundation, other than with the other foundation that I'm going to talk about, which is the Kat Von D Locket. I find this and the Kat Von D Locket are so similar in formula. And if you like one or the other, then, like, if you like this, you'd like the Kat Von D. If you like the Kat Von D locket, you would like this. I don't like either. I've tried both. And I don't know if I'd like it more now because my skin is more normal. And when I initially got this, I did have a lot more kind of dry patches on my face. But this clings to everything. It feels like a heavy mask. Very hard to blend on my skin type. Like I said, it gets stuck on parts of my face. It dries quickly. And I just find it hard to blend no matter what I use. I just don't like how it turns out. Throughout the day, it gets really dry around my nose area, around my mouth. It gets kind of falls into all of my little creases on my face. And I found the exact same thing with the Kat Von D Locket. And both of these were pretty well talked about here on YouTube. I just, for me, I think it's my skin type. I think if you had an oily skin type, you would probably love this because I can see it really keeping you mattified. But for me, I am more of a luminous, dewy type girl. I tend to stay away mostly from matte foundations. I can wear the semi-mattes kind of now, but this is a full-on matte, and it's very heavy on the skin. You can feel it. I feel the same about the Kat Von D one, and I just don't like how it looks on me. Like I said, a lot of people love, love, love these foundations. I just did not. It just did not work for me, and this is probably one of my least favorite products that I'll talk about today. So the next product is definitely talked about here on YouTube all the time, and I have to preference this by saying I use this a lot, I've recommended it to some people, but my opinion isn't that it's bad, it's just I don't feel like it is the best concealer I've ever used, and that of course is the Tarte Shape Tape. So listen, listen, because I know you guys are going to be like, it's the best concealer on the planet. I think it is really good, I think it is full coverage, I don't think you have to use a lot, it blends well, but... But I recently started using the new ColourPop one, and I just like it so much better. And I think my issue with this one is that it does sometimes get dry under my eyes and cakes up, especially if I use it with certain foundations. And it's just weird because I've never heard anyone really say that. But it does cake up on me a little bit and can kind of start to crease. And I just feel like it's a little too much coverage for me. I'm not someone that needs the coverage that some other people need, so I think that's my main thing with this. I do use it and I, I think it's a good product. I just have found other products I like better so it's not as much worth it to me as it used to be. 
But like I said, there is people that love this and stand by it and they've tried other products. Just for me, like I said, I found another product that's cheaper that I like better. So it doesn't make sense for me to kind of say this is the best concealer anymore. Um, and like I said, I do find it can get a little dry and cakey under my eyes, whereas other products I have used do not. But if you are someone that likes super full coverage, then I think you'll like this. I will say you don't need much of this product, so when you see people like caking it under their eyes, you really don't need that much product. Of course, how much you put on is up to you, but you don't need that much. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I don't think it's the best. I don't think it's the best concealer in the world, but I like it. All right, so the last product is definitely the most controversial, and this is why I left it till the end. You guys are probably gonna be like, you are full of shit, you don't like that, but I actually do. So this is the Subculture Palette. I know guys, I know, so many people hated this freaking palette. So this is what the palette looks like. It's really like nice packaging, kind of the typical Anastasia of Beverly Hills packaging. It has the mirror. It did come with a brush, and this was kind of the inside of the palette. Gorgeous colors, I think everyone can agree that they like the colors on this. The issue was, of course, with the formula. I will say this is a completely different formula than the Modern Renaissance, which was a bit disappointing for everyone, including myself. Um, it's definitely the most pigmented palette I have, but I think it is a little bit too pigmented. But I do like the palette. So my opinion is a little bit different because some people say this is horrible. They wanted to set it on fire. And, you know, I'm probably going to get shit for even saying I like this. But I do, I think it's a decent palette. I just think that it's something you have to play with a lot. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's definitely a high maintenance palette. It's not something that you're gonna be able to use easily. Um, but I do think if you are someone that's avidly into makeup or you like Anastasia Beverly Hills, then it's not a bad palette to purchase. Just realize, just know that you might not be grabbing for it as much as some of your other palettes if you don't have the time. But I do like the palette and I think it got a lot of flack mainly for how it was marketed. I'll put the video up in the cards for you guys of my review on this and why I think, you know, it kind of got so much flack here on YouTube. But I actually did enjoy this palette. I still, I still do dip into this on occasion. So yeah, that's one that's definitely an unpopular opinion, but I did like the subculture palette. All right, guys, so I am sweating, sweating my ass off right now. It is so hot where I'm filming right now in my bathroom, and I need to get out of here. But I wanted to come on and just kind of tell you guys thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I thought it was something a little bit different. Um, just to give you guys kind of an idea of how different people can feel about different makeup products and that it's really good, like I said, to watch tons of reviews on things because it really is dependent on your skin type and your preferences when you're buying makeup. But yeah, that's just some of the things that I think I have an unpopular opinion about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed filming this one other than being sweaty. But thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, give me a thumbs up. It's right down there if you like the video. And I will see you soon in my next video. Bye, guys.